Another week on my CCIE journey is in the books. What have I been up to and can I explain multicast in five minutes? Let's find out. I didn't record a video last week and that's okay. I had a sick child. It's very important to put family first and uh, when he's sick, that's what really matters to me. I don't want to spend my time studying and recording when I need to be taking care of my family. But that doesn't mean I didn't make progress. I've made a lot of progress. At this point, I'm actually about halfway through with the Encore textbook. And of course, I'm watching CBT Nuggets to supplement that. My method has always been watch the Nuggets first, just so I get the high level, great explanation and understanding, dig into the details with the textbook, and then finish with practice exams before taking the exam. So I've already watched these Nuggets before. I, I get access to watching them before they're even released. Uh, so I'm watching them again while I'm reading the relevant topic. And this week I focused heavily on multicast, QoS and the IP services. So that's things like NTP, the first hop redundancy protocols, and then NAT. So that's been what I've been focusing on this week. Last week, in, since I didn't bring this up, I did finish up pretty much all of the IP routing items that I was worried about there. That would be EIGRP, OSPF, and of course BGP, which are things that I've already been pretty comfortable with in the past, but it doesn't hurt to dig into them, lab them up even some more. So this week, somebody tweeted me and said they would love for me to try to explain multicast. And what I'm going to try and do is I'm just going to give a high level summary. I'm going to try and get it done in under five minutes. This always helps me to talk about these topics that I'm learning about too. And while I've done multicast in the past, this is really pushing me beyond my comfort zone. So without further ado, let's jump on the whiteboard, see if I can explain multicast in five minutes. So multicast solves the problem of one device like this server here, trying to initiate sessions to multiple endpoints, what we call receivers, which are gonna be these green squares that are supposed to represent computers, but I'm terrible at drawing. So in a unicast setting, all of these devices could form sessions directly to this server and get the streaming information that way, but that would obviously clog up bandwidth, all of these routers along the way, and the server itself would have to maintain sessions for each one of these devices. And here, we've only got five devices on the screen, but what if we had thousands or even tens of thousands? Well, that would obviously be unmanageable. A broadcast is also a way that we could handle these situations, but now every single device on the network has to manage that packet, whether it wants the data or not. Multicast solved this problem by the server sending in one stream of data into the network, and then the devices choosing to subscribe to that stream if they want to. Multicast packets have to be routed just like a router has to route unicast packets, but it does all of the subscription and routing through a couple different protocols. The first protocol that comes into play here is called IGMP, and this occurs at layer two. IGMP is basically started by the endpoint here, the receiver, who tells the router, hey, I want to subscribe to a stream that's on a multicast IP, something like 224.1.2.3. So the endpoint, the computer here, the receiver says, I want to subscribe to 224.1.2.3. Please, Mr. Router, go find that for me. There's a lot more that goes into IGMP, but that's the gist of it. IGMP just occurs between the router and the endpoint, the receiver here. From there, PIM steps into play and that occurs at layer three. There are a bunch of different flavors and deployment methods or modes for PIM, but the idea here is that this router at this point is now trying to find the most efficient path to get to the server. So on all the interfaces on this router that PIM is running, it will start sending messages out to the next router saying, hey, if you see a stream for 224.1.2.3, I want it. Now, how it arrives to this conclusion, that depends on the flavor of PIM that you're deploying. There could be things called like a rendezvous point where all the routers check in first before receiving the stream or the streams check in with that first before sending it on to a client. The rendezvous point is basically like the friend who's hooking you up with a blind date. Hey, receiver, meet the server, server, meet the receiver. And then from there, they go on the date and they figure out their own path forward. And once they figured out the own path forward, at least in Cisco deployments, the router would then build the fastest path or the shortest path to the endpoint to make the most efficient way to collect the stream from the server and get it into the hands of the endpoints. 
but how the router gets it into the hands of the endpoints is where it gets pretty interesting. Let's clear the screen and talk about what happens in this link right here. Think about the goal of multicast again for a moment. Multicast stream has made its way into the router, and now it's time to get it into the hands of our green receiver here. The orange receiver doesn't want that stream. It's not subscribed to it. But how does it work? The point of multicast was to simply send a stream out towards a group of clients, and if the group of clients want that stream, they can access it. So by default, what this router is going to do is it's going to send that stream into the segment which hits this switch and the switch by default is going to send it to all of the receivers on that segment so even the orange client that doesn't want that multicast stream is going to get it and it's going to have to end up discarding what's really happening under the hood here is we have the multicast ip address the multicast group here 224.1.2.3 that's all great and all because that's layer three but now at this point we're on layer two so layer two technologies are what's going to have to carry the stream from the router into the endpoint. So what happens under the hood is a multicast MAC address 01005E, and then the remaining three portions are gonna be built using the multicast IP address. So just for simplicity's sakes, this isn't correct, I'm gonna put this one, two, three. So the destination frame will be this MAC address. The router sends that destined to that MAC address into the switch, and here's the kicker. Because no device has that MAC address as their source, that MAC address does not exist in the MAC address table on this switch. And what is a switch's default behavior when it receives a frame that it doesn't know the destination to? It sends it out every port in the same VLAN. So when the green client says, I want that stream, it does begin listening on that MAC address. But again, it will never source a frame with that MAC address. So the switch will never learn about that MAC address from that port. Again, because the default behavior is going to be to send it out all ports on that segment, it's going to get sent out towards the orange client here too. And because the orange client isn't listening on that MAC address, it will be dropped at the NIC. That still creates a lot of unnecessary choke in this segment right here. So what the switch can enable is something called IGMP snooping. That way, when the green client sends in its IGMP join request, basically saying, hey, Mr. Router, I want to listen to this group. The switch can then associate the destination MAC address with that port, and it will only ever be sent out the correct port again. So that's been the crash course of multicast. Obviously, multicast is a lot more complicated than that when you start talking about the different PIM modes like dense mode, sparse mode, source specific multicast. And one of the cool things about multicast and specifically Encore training is that Keith Barker didn't explain it in five minutes. He goes into detail and even demos how to configure and lab multicast within the virtual labs in the CBT Nuggets Encore course. It's been crucial for my multicast training watching his content on CBT Nuggets. So if you haven't checked out the Encore content on CBT Nuggets or if you're interested in multicast, I can't stress it enough. Check out the description for my link to the Encore content and you'll get fired up, ready to go learning for Encore training. So how am I feeling overall about my journey towards CCIE and getting towards Encore? At this point, I'm halfway through the book. I'm doing good following along with CBT Nuggets but it is a tremendous amount of content. I'm starting to get that overwhelmed feeling, like maybe end of June or early July is a bit aggressive. I need to take my time a little bit slower and master this content even more. I really want to nail this exam. I don't need to crush it, but I wanna pass it for sure. I wanna pass it on my first try. So it really comes down to how I'm performing on the practice exams. I am going to be using the boson practice exams and I will demo those practice exams here on my channel when that time comes. So look at that for the end of June. But until then, that's been the progress towards my CCIE journey, tackling multicast, QoS, and those IP services this week. Thanks for stopping by, y'all. See you in the next one.